Jesus calling I answer yes, I will go I see the need of people crying My answer is I will go I go to share the message of love I go to share the blessed Discouraged, I call to Jesus' help because I have decided I will go. Thank you, Pastor Chair, and thank you, Pastor Kohler, for the amazing assembly of this wonderful 61st General Conference session. And greetings to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. How, how good it is to, to be together once again as a world family at a General Conference session. And this is truly a unique session, as it is the first time the session has met in a hybrid situation with many delegates here in person, on site, and others joining electronically by Zoom. I would also like to welcome our members and guests with us here in St. Louis, wherever you are, and those who are watching on live streaming. You are so welcome. We're happy that you're here with us. General Conference sessions are a very important event in the life of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is here where decisions are made that affect the entire world church. Delegates, and you're seated here on this vast floor under this dome, and we thank St. Louis for its great hospitality. Delegates, your voices. Your votes matter. And thankfully, so much of the world church respects and follows what you vote in the church. We work in a mutually respectful and collegial spiritual setting for what is voted. So let me encourage you, as official delegates, whether you are here in person, on site in St. Louis, or whether you are connected through Zoom or electronic means, I urge you to participate through voice and vote, those of you who are delegates. You see, it truly matters, and it is a sacred responsibility. Thank you for using Election Buddy. It's an interesting name, but it is our voting system. Election Buddy, thank you for using that when you vote and being diligent to submit your vote electronically as you participate in the 61st General Conference session. Now, since our last General Conference session in 2015, the world has experienced significant crises and has undergone unprecedented change. As Seventh-day Adventists, this should not surprise us. Prophecy foretells the condition of the world just before Jesus comes. And we are told in the spirit of prophecy that the final events will be rapid ones. Yet, despite the challenges, we praise God that through His strength, His last day remnant movement continues moving forward around this globe. We've had to adapt to many different things and circumstances that led to some very difficult decisions, including postponing the General Conference not just once, but twice. Nevertheless, God has blessed in marvelous ways, and we praise Him for the assurance that he will continue guiding his church through whatever may lie ahead. And let me indicate, I praise God for the beautiful worship, prayer, 
Bible study session we had to introduce this session. Now, while it's impossible to report on all the wonderful ways in which God has worked during these past seven years, we will touch on some, in fact, just a few of the highlights. There are many more that could be named as you, God's people, have answered the call saying, I will go and reach the world for Christ. We give God all the glory for what he has done through each of us and his remnant church. Nowhere has dedication to this call been more apparent than in Eastern Europe where conflict rages in Ukraine and massive refugee crisis is flooding neighboring countries. And yet you, God's people, stepped up to the challenge and continued carrying God's work forward despite devastating circumstances. Although displaced from their studios in Kyiv, Hope Channel Ukraine continues to courageously produce and broadcast hope-filled, Bible-based programs despite the danger surrounding them. In Bucha, a town that I have visited, now known around the world for horrific scenes, our Adventist Center of Higher Education survived with only minimal damage. The students were evacuated, with some going to our Adventist youth camp in western Ukraine, where they are helping to care for 97 internally displaced orphans. ADRA, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, has been very active in helping with this humanitarian crisis, not only in Ukraine, but in many of the surrounding countries as refugees fled to safety. Seventh-day Adventist schools, churches, provided places of refuge. Some members provided bread and other food items, while others have opened their homes to those in need. What an example for us all serving others in their greatest time of need. And thank you to those around this world who are being the hands and feet of Jesus as you bring his light and hope to others. Another way lives are being saved is through many Adventist mission life hope centers around the world. In the city of Talca, Chile, a young woman named Consuelo was looking for hope. Deeply depressed, she often thought of ending her life. Then one day, someone told Consuelo about the Adventist Life Hope Center, and she decided to visit. There, she, she met Michelle and Angie, youth volunteers in the One Year in Mission program. The three became close friends and Consuelo began spending more time at the center. I felt the presence of God in everyone at the center, Consuelo said. They welcomed me with open arms. Before long, the three young women were studying the Bible together and eventually Consuelo decided to be baptized. Today, Consuelo is happily volunteering at the center where she is reaching others for Christ. We praise the Lord for the wonderful work that our One Year in Mission and many other volunteers are doing around the world. And we are thankful for these many centers of influence as they play an integral part in mission to the cities. An integral part of God's ministry to the world is medical missionary work or comprehensive health ministry. Touching the lives of people as Christ did physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. 
This is not only the work of many health professionals, clinics, and hospitals around the world. It is to be the right arm of the gospel message being used by all church members to help people to be healthier, happier, and holier, all through the power of the Holy Spirit and Christ's righteousness. The Health Ministries Department and the Education Department, in close cooperation with the East Central Africa Division and the Rwanda Union, have nurtured a new medical school on the campus of the Adventist University of Central Africa in Kigali, Rwanda. What a blessing this medical school will be for the Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive Health Ministry Outreach to the entire continent of Africa. Praise God for our health ministries activities around the world. The mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church has always been based upon God's Word, the Bible. From the beginning, we've been a prophetic movement based on the sure word of prophecy. As we've followed God's counsel, He has blessed the church based on the Bible. Our message and our mission are inseparably linked. And the way we read the Bible, hermeneutics, is vital to our understanding. Recognizing this, a request was made during the 2015 General Conference session for a specific hermeneutic to be developed for the World Church. This request was entrusted by the session steering committee to the Biblical Research Institute. In 2020, a book entitled Biblical Hermeneutics and Adventist Approach was released in response to this request. Published jointly by the BRI and the Review and Herald Publishing Association, this 488-page book contains 14 chapters written by 12 respected Adventist scholars who tackle important aspects of biblical hermeneutics from an Adventist perspective. The BRI also produced 14 videos introducing issues addressed more fully in the book. Both resources have been translated into multiple languages and are being used in classrooms and shared on social media. The Geoscience Research Institute is an important research entity of the Church. Its staff includes professional scientists who are involved in several lines of original scientific research, with an understanding of Earth history in the light of scriptural revelation. The Geoscience Research Institute, or GRI, provides many educational resources on faith and science, including articles, books, videos, and photo galleries on its website, and promotes Creation Sabbath each year. They also organize creation seminars and field conferences for pastors, teachers, church leaders, and university students. These field conferences provide opportunities to learn more about God's creation while exploring nature outdoors as well as in a classroom setting. Recently, the GRI released two very helpful books, including an engaging new textbook for high school students titled By Design Biology, The Scientific Study of Life and Design and Catastrophe, 51 Scientists Explore Evidence in Nature. Books provide an important way of reaching others for Christ, and the Publishing Ministries Department plays a vital role in encouraging total member involvement through literature distribution. This year marked 15 years of the Missionary Book of the Year project. And during that time, more than 700 million books have been scattered around the world through the hands of church members. And in 2021, for the first time, a video version of the Missionary Book of the Year, Hope for Troubled Times, written by Pastor Mark Finley, 
was produced in conjunction with the General Conference Communication Department. Two other exciting projects include the translation of electronic evangelistic tracts into 85 languages for distribution in the 1040 window, and the upcoming Great Controversy Project 2.0, a plan to personally distribute millions upon millions of full version copies of the Great Controversy as the Missionary Book of the Year in 2023 and 2024. You see, my brothers and sisters, it is really exciting to see that people are already getting a head start on the distribution of this marvelous book, The Great Controversy. Just this last Sabbath, Nancy, my dear wife, and I had the privilege of participating with the St. Louis West County Church in sharing The Great Controversy with their community. And just yesterday, we welcomed eight I-will-go bicyclists, cyclists, who on their own initiative, on this personal tour, went on a more than 1,000-mile bike ride from Washington, D.C. to St. Louis, distributing the great controversy and your Bible and you all along the way. It's wonderful to see so much enthusiasm growing. And this morning, I'd like to introduce you to Jerry Duval, pastor of the Kimberling City and Nixa Seventh-day Adventist churches right here in Missouri. Pastor Jerry, thank you for being with us. How, how did you get involved in distributing the great controversy in your community? Well, after COVID, we were looking for a way to reach out into our community again, how to get evangelism started again. And one of our church members said, hey, I know a guy by the name of Oleg, you know who he is. They said, let's go do the great controversy. And the next thing you know, the church voted on it. We began to move really slow. So we ordered 1,408 books and began. And uh, Oleg come down, did a presentation, and we went out. And we actually put those 1,400 books out in less than three hours. So your members were really involved with this. They, they were. And they were supportive. They were very supportive. Uh, what would you say to pastors, church leaders, uh, members around the world about participating in a project in distri distributing the great controversy? Well, first thing is the church that does nothing can expect nothing. All you got to do is begin, and this is a great starting point for evangelism. You get that book out and you, you begin to see things in your churches. Our church members came back that very day and they were so excited. They were, we have a mix. We have Ukrainian and English mix and they were afraid of their English, English skills. They got out there and they began to talk with the community, even though they spoke broken English and they come back so excited they were able to share and touch lives. Uh, a lot of them took Bibles back to people that had no Bibles. They really got excited. And that excitement not only happened there, but it began to spread uh, throughout our church and throughout this entire year. That day they wanted, they voted, to, let's do more books. So we've had an ongoing book supply to our community and we continue that this year. They want to do it again this year. But one of the things is it's become so infectious, the books that you delivered last week. Those were our church members that delivered those books from Indiana to here so that you could deliver those. They gave their trucks and their time. Anatoly Survey and uh, Nikolai Cherney both used their trucks to get those books here. So it is contagious. And once you see that in your churches, it is a wonderful thing because your church begins to bloom in ways that you probably don't see right now, but God will use it in a great way. Praise God. Pastor Duvall for this enthusiastic report. I'm enth enthused just listening to you. God bless you in a special way and the churches. Give them our special thanks. We will see people in heaven because of this. Oh, amen. God amen. bless you. God bless. The year 2020 opened the door to a new era of shock and uncertainty as the COVID-19 pandemic grasped the world in its deadly grip. 
Nations were in lockdown as governments tried to deal with the deadly disease. We mourn the loss of millions, including Seventh-day Adventists, who died, and express our deepest appreciation to the thousands of healthcare workers who provided untiring ministry to those who were suffering. And although this was a time of great upheaval, with most church doors closed due to the pandemic, the mission of God's church continued as he opened new doors of opportunity to reach the world for him. Hope Channel International quickly developed a weekly series, Hope at Home, offering viewers a weekly worship opportunity despite the pandemic and lockdowns. Family Ministries directors continued encouraging and uplifting families through their weekly broadcast, Real Family Talk, offering counsel in navigating potentially stress-filled situations. Recognizing this as a time of loss for many, Adventist Possibility Ministries offered a special webinar, Finding Joy in Suffering, broadcast live in multiple time zones and languages, bringing comfort and practical suggestions for those in grief. In 2021, the General Conference Women's Ministries Department presented the first ever World Conference. Women in nearly 50 countries watched the I Will Go live streamed a virtual event that offered sermons, seminars, music, and more. And in January of this year, the Children's Ministries Department sponsored an I Will Go global conference, reaching Gen Z and Gen A for Christ. The two-day live stream conference provided lively presentations from a wide variety of child experts. The internet was widely used for soul winning during this quinquennium as multiple online evangelistic meetings took place, including Adventist World Radio's Unlocking Bible Prophecies with Kami Utman. It's difficult to believe that tonight is our... The series was translated into 35 languages and had more than 12 million views. From Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me. The communication department has been actively pursuing mission through the internet since the inception of the Global Adventist Internet Network in 2004. Recently, however, the department has been actively leveraging multiple online opportunities for evangelism. The Digital Evangelism Initiative includes the New Heroes 2 app, reaching children and youth through Bible games, and the Adventist Teams app, allowing members around the world to source and distribute quality biblical content for friends and family, and encouraging total member involvement in the digital space. Adventist Review Ministries has widened its digital outreach, offering family-friendly, inspirational content on ARTV through social media and a redesigned website, in addition to their monthly publications of Adventist Review and Adventist World. We praise God for the many creative ways he has led his church to continue carrying his mission forward through various channels. Technology has also paved the way for millions of people to access the writings of Ellen G. White through the website and apps. Since 2015, the number of users has grown tremendously, with the Ellen White websites and apps averaging 7.5 million visitors every month representing users from almost every nation on Earth. 
In addition, the White Estate averaged 225 million search requests and 24 million download requests for books, ebooks, or audiobooks per month. That represents more than 2.48 billion search requests and 273 million download requests just during 2021. We praise God for the tremendous way He is blessing these inspired writings. We are also thankful for the work of the General Conference's Office of Archives, Statistics, and Research, including the Electronic Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. This new work contains more than 3,000 articles and 7,000 photographs featuring Adventist missionaries, evangelists, institutions, events, and beliefs, and is constantly growing. Education has always been an important part of the Adventist experience, and we praise God for the blueprint He has given to us and the encouragement the General Conference Educational Department gives in following that blueprint. We applaud our teachers and students around the world who have persevered through these especially challenging times when COVID restrictions required quick adaptability to new learning methods. We thank God for each one of our 85,000 teachers and the 1.5 million students who are attending 7,500 schools in nearly 150 countries, including our General Conference Educational Institutions, the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies in the Philippines, the Adventist University of Africa in Kenya, and Andrews University and Loma Linda University Health in the United States. As Seventh-day Adventists, we view education as training, not just for this life, but for eternity. And one of the most effective schools we have for soul winning, and certainly the largest school we operate, is the Sabbath School. Sabbath School is a special ministry that involves every Adventist of all ages around the world. Through its Sabbath School Alive program introduced this past quinquennium, the General Conference Sabbath School and Personal Ministries Department brings together a complete package of Bible study and prayer, a focus on mission, and a format of fellowship that encourages spiritual growth and evangelistic outreach for everyone. Young people play a very important role in the mission of the church, and the Youth Ministries Department takes an active interest in growing strong, committed youth through Adventurer, Pathfinder, and Ambassador Clubs, AY, Public Campus Ministry, Service for Others Opportunities, and more. One of its most well-known events, Global Youth Day, provides an opportunity each year for youth around the world to be the hands and feet of Jesus as they minister to the needs around them. As Seventh-day Adventists, we are blessed to have a very active church as well as significant assets and institutions. God calls us to care for the property He has entrusted to us and we are blessed to have Adventist Risk Management, an important ministry of safety and caring through insurance and risk management solutions. We're particularly grateful for this ministry, especially during the coronavirus pandemic crisis. You know, ministering in the public arena is a very important aspect of our calling as Seventh-day Adventists. The Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department is the official liaison of the church with public offices. It assists in equipping Adventist leaders and members to present church identity, message, and mission 
to people of influence, as well as to every member of society. During the past seven years, an important focus for PARL has been on mediation on behalf of imprisoned brothers and sisters around the world. We invite the global church to pray for our imprisoned members and their families. Adventist Chaplaincy Ministries is another important ministry serving outside church walls. Its role is to create competent, caring, committed Adventist chaplains to serve wherever their presence is needed, including law enforcement, military, health care, educational campuses, communities, and prisons. During the past seven years, ACM, Adventist Chaplaincy Ministries, established worldwide standards of professional chaplaincy certification, including the use of on-site training and online courses. We appreciate the work of this vital and important ministry. Putting God first has been the theme of the General Conference Stewardship Ministries Department. Launched in 2016, this theme has guided the department in encouraging everyone to put God first in all aspects of life. This mindset has promoted an enlarged concept of total member involvement, which includes, as equally important, participation in doing and supporting God's mission through financial resources. In promoting this theme, Stewardship Ministries produced a number of engaging videos, including the God First video series. This series was developed to help people connect with God, providing for them a living experience of trust in Him. Animated by millennials, the videos are devised to answer questions about tithe and offerings and encourage putting God first in everything. Now closely related to the Stewardship Department, is the Planned Giving and Trust Services Department that reminds us that good stewardship doesn't end at death. Planned Giving encourages all Seventh-day Adventists to have a plan that will provide for their families' needs and support the mission of the Church to reach the world for Christ. Gifts received by Planned Giving and Trust Services have fueled mission around the world in a tremendous way. We also praise God for the ministry of GCAS, the General Conference Auditing Services. Their important work helps to ensure that the funds entrusted to God's Church are used appropriately for their intended purposes. Now, in our spiritual journey, God invites us to come to Him for revival and reformation, just as we did this morning in our worship. And during the past quinquennium, we have continued this important initiative, encouraging every member to seek this invitation on a personal level, praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Under the Holy Spirit's guidance, the Revival and Reformation Committee has ignited the hearts of God's people around the world as thousands have been participating in reading God's Word, one chapter at a time, through Revived by His Word and Believe His Prophets, praying together as a worldwide church family and pleading for the outpouring of the latter rain of the Holy Spirit. Under the direction of the General Conference Ministerial Association and the Revival and Reformation Committee, members around the world have been united in prayer through the 10 Days of Prayer initiative, the Quarterly Days of Prayer, the 40 Days of Prayer, the 100 Days of Prayer, and 24-7 United Prayer. Now, for the next few moments, and this is an interesting video. Watch 
as God has used people and is using them in unique ways through united prayer. 진지하게 드리는 신자들의 기도 있기가 세계를 둘러싸게 하라. विश्वासियों की प्रार्थना के द्वारा इस विश्व को उन्हें कहना है फिर बोलो सुख के लिए फिर इन रासियों ने वेरिया उच्चाह मूल्य जेबी क्यों विश्वास से लिंक थोड़ा जब तक हम शी दाव का सिंह तो इन दांव वे रहो शुभ गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग सुप्रभात शुभ दिन शुभ संध्या और बिना ले ए यो रुमने पट प्रार्थना मलयालम के लिए ज्ञान एवरीम हार्दिक बमाई स्वागतम थे स्वागत है यम शाह स्वागत है यम बाय यम दी तोन राब सुगा नदी थान रूम चाय ये सबसे ठप चेत पर है वी आर ऑन एन एक्साइटिंग जर्नी टुगेदर इन ऑल द पीपल्स हु बिकॉज़ यू आर ऑल जस्ट वन सेलिब्रेट प्रेस टू गॉड बिकॉज़ यू आर अ गॉड हु सेव्ड आमेन वी वे प्रेस यू बिकॉज़ यू आर अ पावरफुल गॉड हु कैन ब्रेक ऑल दिस मदर वी वुड लाइक टू लिफ्ट अप इन प्रेयर My Lord, let Thy grace be extended upon us. Lord, as we continue praying for the people whom we love, praise You for giving us a family through this united prayer. May the fruits of the Holy Spirit be seen in each of us. Father, thank You that only in Jesus can we have a new life. Amen. Thank You, Lord, for the good weather. Amen. Today, Lord, please allow us to walk with You. as we would like to walk with you in heaven amen and my father i pray that you will continue to teach us to be kind amen loving to each one to have on the father we really thank you for all the good things that you have done for us Thank you Lord that in serving you and in your presence there is really fullness of joy Lord. Thank you Father for hearing from heaven and assuring us and reassuring us that you are working on the answers to our prayers. We will go. Thank you Father for bringing us together to pray together. Amen. 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 Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, we praise God for what He has accomplished through the ministry of 24/7 United Prayer in this past year. This ministry has been a boost to my spiritual life and has also helped me and gave me opportunity to pray unitedly with earnest praying believers all over God the world. God has uh, made such improvements in my personal devotional times. So oh, thank you. I got cured. to uh, utilize more fully uh, the gifts that I was given by God. My prayers have changed from asking to praising and thanking him. Since my baptism this is the highlight. I I just am so moved by the fact that god has praying people around the globe and i really feel that 24/7 united prayer is what god is going to use to bring revival in our church mm. it's such a blessing to pray with a family a global family and um mm. i can't wait for heaven and i've been so blessed yeah. father in heaven we are so grateful lord for this opportunity to come together to seek you unitedly with all of our hearts thank you so much everybody for your wonderful Thank you so much. It's good to see all your faces. Oh, God is good. God is wonderful. Oh, wonderful! We get to see some of you. That's just beautiful. Yeah. God bless everyone. God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you that you provide that you provided stories of faith that we will develop faith. And thank you that you have the word that you have provided for us that we will become doers of your word. By your spirit, by your grace, we pray that we can apply all of these things in our lives as we endure till the end. Thank you for hearing us and seal our decisions in Jesus' name. Amen. Each quinquennium, the World Church develops a new strategic focus. And during the 2019 Annual Council, a focus for 2020 to 2025 was voted. Reach the world, I will go. The I will go theme originally developed by evangelistically minded young people in South America was quickly adopted by young and old alike as a very exciting strategic focus that encourages total member involvement with everyone having the opportunity to say, yes, I will go. Now, this strategic focus, founded on extensive research, has been widely embraced as Seventh-day Adventists are heeding God's call, saying, yes, Lord, I will go. One young woman who heeded the call was Melissa DePiva Gibson, who allowed God to work through her in an amazing way offering forgiveness and reconciliation despite the horrific circumstances. Melissa was just eight years old when she and her family moved to the Pacific Island nation of Palau, where her father, Ruimar de Paiva served as pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the main city of Koror, and her mother, Margareth, worked at the Adventist school. Melissa and her brother, Larasan, quickly made friends and soon felt at home. Tragically, just one and a half years after they began their ministry on Palau, Pastor de Paiva, his wife, Margareth, and their son, Larison, were brutally murdered one night in their home. Melissa was kidnapped, abused, strangled, thrown down a ravine, and left for dead. Providentially, she survived. The perpetrator of the crime, Justin Hiroshi, was apprehended and sentenced to three life sentences for his terrible crimes. At the state funeral held in the Palau National Gymnasium, Ruth de Paiva, mother of the slain pastor, invited the mother of the perpetrator to come forward. Putting her arm around Justin's mother, Mrs. de Paiva said, Here we are two mothers. I am sure the mother of Justin has prayed so many times for her son, and I am sure her heart hurts terribly. We train them, we educate them, but they have their own minds. Mrs. De Paiva, who had visited Justin in jail just days earlier, offering him forgiveness and hope in Christ, urged that no one hold this crime against Justin's family, but instead offered forgiveness and reconciliation. Her actions changed and healed the heart of the nation. Eighteen years later, in 2018, Melissa now married and a nurse, followed in her grandmother's footsteps, returning to Palau, where she went to the prison and met Justin face to face, offering him forgiveness and peace. This amazing story is told in the newly released film, Return to Palau, which premiered on March 16, 2022, in Palau, in the same national gymnasium where the De Paiva State Funeral was held nearly 20 years earlier. Once again, the gymnasium was packed with people, this time, however, not to mourn, but to experience the joy and peace that only God 
can give. Through her forgiveness and allowing the story to be told through this powerful film, Melissa is answering God's call to go and reach a hurting world for Jesus Christ. Melissa, uh, what a privilege to talk directly with you. And, and how were you able to forgive someone who committed such atrocities against you and your family? Yeah, um, I wish there was a very like one worded answer that could encompass everything, but it really is a the best way that I can describe it. And I've described it like this many ways is it it's a process um, and not everybody goes through the process the same way and not everybody goes through the process in the same time frame. So for me, it took several years to process things in my mind. Um, many conversations, um, many hours of just thinking and even reading the Bible. I was only 10 years old, but even even then it was um, God was working through me and the Holy Spirit and my grandparents, um, the whole family, everybody was praying. And um, I think all of that kind of comes together. But if I could summarize that um, a little bit further, I I would say definitely understanding that we are no better than somebody else, no matter what their sins, because to God, um, it, it's, it's like a shocking reality, a shocking truth that our sins are all equal in his eyes. I know that um, it's, it's not, it doesn't feel the same for us, but I think once I understood the fact that every single person on this planet, whether they do good or bad, God loves them the same, and his his heart aches for all of us. Um, it puts things into perspective, and then you're able to forgive. And I do want to just throw in there as well that forgiveness doesn't it doesn't um, cure all things. It doesn't make everything right, and it doesn't make you best friends. Or uh, there's a, a whole other world, a realm that you could go in there um, to talk about what happens after forgiveness, but Definitely, um, I think between community support, faith in God, and that realization that you just you just talk to God, give them your struggles, um, allow yourself to feel vulnerable, and the person may never know you forgave them, or they will know that you forgave, but that's uh, not up to us. You know, um, I think just leave it in God's hands and just wait for the process to happen is the best the best way that I can share that. Thank you, Melissa. That's right from your heart. And uh, so this process of forgiveness is really a spiritual process, and it's giving it to God. Now, you know, you already shared the importance of forgiveness, but what would you say to a person who's struggling to forgive someone who's really, really hurt them? Of course. Um, in, in the story of to our family, I think a lot of people may not resonate with my grandmother who forgave so quickly and so readily. And to be honest, as, as we talked further um, and after years afterward, um, my grandma does say that she doesn't she didn't rehearse those lines. She didn't really know the impact of what she was saying. So, um, yeah, sometimes it happens quickly. Sometimes it happens over several years and that is okay. Just being in the journey of forgiveness, I think is um, meaningful to us and, and what God wants from us. Um, you may not be able to, to forgive in one month, two years, 10, 15 years depends. It really depends on the situation, but starting that process one step at a time, um, it's okay to struggle with forgiveness because forgiveness isn't something that comes from our hearts anyways. It's something that that can only come from God and from your experience as you process those thoughts and um, things change for you in the way that you maybe see that person. Um, I think God will bring forgiveness to a full um, to forgiveness to a full experience in your life uh, when the time is right. Very gracious answer. And, uh, you know, God has really guided you and your grandmother. Your grandmother is a precious person, uh, both of you in this forgiveness process. Michael, uh, 
you're a pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in what ways would you say Melissa's example of, of courage and forgiveness has impacted your own life as her husband and as a pastor? I think for me, uh, her her story has only grown in significance as we've been married and as we've grown together. It's helped me understand that having a graceful outlook on life and being gracious with other people really goes a long way. Uh, we all carry deep-seated trauma. We carry, carry things around with us. And oftentimes when we don't forgive other people, it's like drinking a poison and expecting the other person to die. Uh, and so having a, a gracious outlook in life and uh, seeking towards forgiving those who have wronged us and reconciliation relationships is key. And I think in pastoral ministry specifically, it's helped me realize that everyone has a story, and no matter what their outside shell looks like, no matter what uh, they're exhibiting in the moment, there's, there's trauma, uh, there's, there's difficult things that everyone has faced. And though they exhibit those on the outside or if they're holding them on the inside, as a pastor, it's led me to, to ask deeper questions, uh, to empathize with the people around me and to dig into their story, uh, not looking for the nitty gritty details, uh, but to really understand where they're coming from, being able to walk with them in a place of understanding and, and empathy. And so for me, uh, knowing Melissa and getting to know her more each and every day uh, has dramatically changed my outlook on life and uh, how I see ministry. Thank you, Michael, for that very insightful approach to what you've learned through this whole process. And may God bless both of you in a very special way. It's just a great privilege to have you part of God's beautiful Adventist family and part of God's ministry. Thank you to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. God's work of evangelism is ongoing around the globe, especially during this recent pandemic. Thank you for what so many of you have done and are doing to share God's precious biblical message in personal and public evangelism. Very recently in Indianapolis, Indiana, we participated in evangelistic outreach to that city as a result of our commitment when we were going to have the general conference session in that city. What a joy it was to see the faces of interested people night after night listening to the Word of God and receiving health lectures. What a tremendous support the Lake Union Conference, the Lake Region Conference, the Indiana Conference and their area churches gave to this special evangelistic outreach to Indianapolis, which consisted of several evangelistic meetings and Pathway to Health. My brothers and sisters around the world and fellow leaders assembled here in St. Louis, by God's grace, be involved in personal and public evangelistic outreach as we come to the end of Earth's history. There will not only be souls in heaven because of God working through you, you will also be spiritually blessed as you review our wonderful biblical truths all focused on Christ. I know I am refreshed every time I preach those messages. Now, let me share what took place in the Philippines with former rebels in Mindoro, an island. Another amazing story of forgiveness and reconciliation. For half a century, war raged between the Philippine Communist Party's New People's Army, NPA, and the Philippine government, causing the death of more than 40,000 people. Living in the remote mountains of Mindoro, one of the more than 7,640 islands of the Philippine archipelago, the communist rebels planned and trained 
for their ongoing war. Last November, Nancy and I had the great opportunity to participate in a nationwide evangelistic program called Earth's Final Countdown. It was a tremendous evangelistic experience with our church members and leaders in the three unions of the Philippines. This total member involvement outreach was coordinated by Adventist World Radio and the division leadership in conjunction with Hope Channel. Despite the restrictions of the pandemic, thousands were baptized as a result of intense small group activities combined with comprehensive health ministry as well as the thrilling work of the Holy Spirit on the hearts of former rebels in the mountains of Mindoro. In 2017, Adventist World Radio began broadcasting a series of evangelistic sermons and Bible studies across the island of Mindoro in preparation for a total member involvement evangelistic series. The broadcasts were an amazing success and approximately 1,400 people were baptized following the June 2017 evangelistic meetings. The broadcasts continued, and unbeknownst to AWR, by 2019, even the rebels hiding in the mountainous jungles were listening. The Holy Spirit was doing a profound work in their lives. And in 2020, they surrendered their hearts to God and their guns to the Philippine government. Incredible reconciliation took place between the former rebel soldiers and Philippine soldiers as they embraced one another. The former rebels, now fully reconciled, were given amnesty by the government and on November 13, 2021, hundreds of former NPA rebels clad in blue I Will Go t-shirts, along with their leader and his wife Rose, were baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church in a ceremony on Mindoro. In concurrence with this event, other TMI presentations were given across the Philippines resulting in 124,000 baptisms across that country as they listened to Earth's final countdown, TMI presentations. But God's work didn't end there. Believing in total member involvement and taking the I will go call seriously, these now fully reconciled believers returned to their colleagues and friends preaching and sharing the Advent message with them. Again, the Lord moved mightily as more rebels and others gave their hearts to the Lord, resulting in 1,200 precious souls being baptized in Mindoro on Sabbath, April 9, 2022. Here with us today, by way of video connection are two of the fully reconciled former rebel leaders. I had the privilege of baptizing their former rebel general and Pastor Dwayne McKee, who will be assisting today in the baptism of Adventist World Radio, baptized his wife, the wife of this former rebel general. It was just a few months ago in Mindoro that this took place. Also with me here on the platform is Pastor Robert Dulai, who is Philippines AWR coordinator and who will be assisting us with a short interview with these former rebels. Now today, in their presence, in the presence of these former rebel individuals who are now fully reconciled, they will also be able to view and see the distinct privilege of a baptism. And I want to introduce to you the Philippine Army Colonel Eric Guevara 
and his precious wife, Leia. Colonel Guevara is the second in command in the Philippine Army Regiment that is overseeing the transitional operations dealing with the former NPA rebels. And because of what he and his wife have seen and what they have studied in God's word with Pastor Robert Dulai of AWR Philippines, they have decided to dedicate their lives fully to the Lord in baptism and today join the Seventh-day Adventist Church. <laughs> Colonel and Mrs. Guevara, we welcome you. What a story of forgiveness and reconciliation as we prepare for the very end of time and Earth's final countdown and the coming, the soon coming, of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now, I want to pass the microphone to Pastor Dulai. And Pastor Dulai is going to be asking questions of our former rebel leaders who are now fully reconciled in Jesus Christ by way of Zoom to Philippines, and we are carefully securing their identity. We do not want in any way to jeopardize their personal identity and personal freedom. But Pastor Dulai, ask these wonderful new believers through Zoom, as we connect with them in the Philippines, how God has changed their lives and what they feel in their hearts right now. Please, Pastor Dulat. Magandang umaga, Ate Rose. Uh, kamusta kayo dyan? Narinig niya ako. Sa so, kagaya ng binanggit, pwede mo bang ikwento sa amin uh, kung papaano na bago ang buhay mo at anong nararamdaman mo ngayon? Uh, Masaya po ako. Tulad na mabang ngayon ang Nagiging instrumento ako at isa sa nabigyan ng mundo sa dipunan sa kapagdo ko ng Honduro. Bakit pa kayo rin po ng buhay? Wala ang katulatayan. Nagiging tumatago. Pero wala rin ka bangahan. Magana na ako sa ang mga anak kung paano ko sila bangahin. Pero napakabuti pa ng Panginoon sa isang katulad kong makasalanan. Hindi ka nalaman siya nang iiwan. Ginamit niya ang AWR 360 radio program upang abutin ako at ang mga kasaman ko sa kabundukan. Nakakatuwa ang kanilang programa tulad ng radio broadcasting, barangay pantry, gift giving at evangelistic meeting sa pangunguna po ni Pastor Robert Dulay. Ito ang naging dahan upang maramdaman ko ang presensya ng Panginoon. Nagkaroon ako ng peace of mind. Natuto akong humingi ng tawad Natutong magpatawad, natutong makipag-usap at humarap sa mga tao. Sa mga tuwid, muli pong nakabalik ako sa lipunan. Ngayon, naging bahagi na po ako ng AWR 360 bilang instrumento ng Panginoon na isang misyonari sa Mindoro upang abutin ang mga di pa nakakakilala sa Kanya at upang maranasan din nila ang kasiyahang tulad ng aking nadarama. Natagpuan ko po ang misyon ng aking buhay. Hindi upang tugisin sa kabundukan, kundi maging tulay ng pag-ibig ng Panginoon at upang itakas ang mga tao mula sa kadaliman tungo sa kargilas, gilalas na kaliwanagan. Yan po, Pastor. So for 18 years, she was serving in the rebel movement and she doesn't have peace. Her life was a mess and away from the family. But when we heard God's message through the... Uh, ministry of the Adventist World Radio in, in the island of Mindoro and through the ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, he found peace. And now she is serving as our AWR missionary, reaching the islands of Mindoro and preparing these people for the soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the result of the overwhelming 
uh, impact of the ministry of the Adventist World Radio in the whole island of Mindoro, transforming the lives of people, even the lives of these rebel people. What a blessing to see what the Holy Spirit does in the lives of people when God touches their hearts. And now, Colonel and Mrs. Guevara, let me just ask you a question before your baptism. You're part of the Philippine military. You have been watching what has happened in the lives of these former rebels. You have been so impressed. You have been studying God's word. And something has happened to your life. Tell me, Colonel, what is it that has changed your life? Uh, it was uh, during the uh, course of our interaction with the uh, former rebels where we saw how God moved and worked to transform these individuals to a fully restored individual. And one day, the Holy Spirit discerned upon us through the teachings of Pastor Dulai, and it is where we opened our hearts and accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Powerful. Powerful. And uh, Leah, could I just ask, what do you feel in your heart right now? Are you excited or happy? Uh, kasi hindi ko akalaing makakarating ako dito, pero ang feeling ko ngayon, ibang iba, uh, siguro, yung si Lord, dinala kami ni Eric dito para makasama kayo lahat dito sa um, kinikabahan ho ako hindi ko alam ang feeling ko <laughs> pero masaya ako happy ako so she said the Lord brought us here for a purpose and I'm feeling nervous but uh, I'm happy that we are here in front of you now it is my happy privilege and that of Pastor Dwayne McKee of Adventist World Radio to proceed with you into this baptistry and to see a new life come from out of the water because the Holy Spirit has done something in your heart. Let's proceed into the baptistry. What a great privilege it is to be part of God's Advent movement, a movement stretching across the entire globe, a movement not born of human beings, not originating in a committee, not something conjured up by some imaginative person, but a movement born of heaven coming from the very throne room of God. What a privilege to see that the Holy Spirit wishes to use every single one of us in total member involvement, saying, yes, Lord, I will go. I will be part of your last day message to an earth that is crying for God's precious love. Now, as we see these lives of Colonel Eric Guevara, his precious wife, 
Leah Guevara, change through the power of the Holy Spirit. May it inspire all of you and each one of us to be part of this last day movement. For certainly, Jesus is coming soon. And so now, Colonel Guevara and Sister Leah, Pastor McKee and I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. to the platform again. I want to make a special appeal to each of you. Regardless of where you're from, what you're doing, what talents you think God has given to you or talents you don't think you have, God has a place for every one of you. And he wants to use you. Those of you who are watching live stream, Maybe there's someone who has not given their hearts completely to the Lord, and maybe this experience has drawn you closer to Him, and you want to say, yes, Lord, I want to be part of your last day movement. I accept your redemption, your saving grace, being justified and sanctified through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I want to be baptized. If you're that person, contact your local Seventh-day Adventist pastor. And to all of us, the privilege of being part of an ongoing movement that allows us to truly fill the earth with the message as our theme here and the General Conference says, Jesus is coming. Get involved. How many of you would like to commit yourself to that great final theme of saying, yes, Lord, I'll be part of your great mission? Would you raise your hand wherever you are? Amen. I would like to ask you to commit that special commitment you have made by kneeling with me in prayer. Those of you here on this floor, we ask you to kneel if you can. Those in the stands, you can stand. Let us kneel together. Precious Father in heaven, you see the leaders of your church, lay leaders, church leaders kneeling before you. This is the general conference session. This is your meeting. We are at your service as your sons and daughters. And now as we kneel in commitment to taking this beautiful Advent message worldwide, we ask that you will give us the power through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray for the latter reign of the Holy Spirit. We pray that you will help us to be part of revival and reformation, to be part of total commitment and member involvement. And Lord, we ask that you will keep, help each one of us to say, yes, Lord, I will go. I will be part of your last day message. This message, which has touched the hearts of Colonel Eric and Sister Leah, we thank you for them. Bless them in their new life in Jesus. 
Bless our dear former rebels who are now fully reconciled to you. And Lord, help there to be many more examples of this as each one of us participate in the last final proclamation of the three angels' messages and the fourth angel, allowing people to turn back to the true worship of you, our God. We thank you for hearing us and for sealing our commitment to you in the precious and wonderful name of our Creator, our Redeemer, our Savior, our High Priest, our Master Physician, our Master Teacher, and our coming King, Jesus Christ. Amen. God be with you. God be with you in a special way. Privilege. Please, let's go down. No one and nothing can stop the mission of the church, the mission of God. The pandemic couldn't do it. Even wars cannot do it. The very last Sabbath, in Ukraine, 36 new members, new believers were baptized. 150 since the beginning of the war. Nothing and no one can stop the mission of God. So we started this session emphasizing mission. And by God's grace, we will end this session by emphasizing mission on Friday and on Sabbath. Thank you, Elder Wilson, and thank you to all of you who have played an active role in fulfilling God's mission. Praise be to God.